Welcome in everyone to the Challenge After Show. Today, Jenna and I are talking about the Challenge uh, USA Season 2, Episode 9, Enemy of the State. I get that one. However, Jenna, okay. I came up with a better title. Okay. Oh, I thought we were going to say you came up with a better enemy, because I think that there's kind of like two maybe sketchy okay. in the house tonight. I'm excited to see who you think the other enemy is, but obviously they're referring to Chris is what we can assume. Have you ever watched that show with a young Chris Rock in it? Is it called Everyone Hates Chris? That's what it should yeah. have been. That should have been the yeah. title, unless they couldn't get the rights for it. But I thought yeah, that was maybe. a much more fun. Uh, yeah, whatever. That should have been the title. That have been yeah, no. Fun. That's exactly what I was thinking the entire time too, is that I just had like Everyone Hates Chris stuck in my head because it really did become... I understand he shot himself in the foot and there's totally things that he did that make him guilty and deserving of, of, you know, kind of the backlash he's getting. And again, of course, we're not there. So we only see what we see, but there was part of me that actually felt bad for him because I do feel like he was just trying to play the game and be a game player. You have to try something, right? Like you have to try making moves and everyone everyone like unanimously just hated him for it he that's the way that the that's the way the editing wanted to make it seem and maybe it really was that bad but i'm sorry sebastian was trying to work his bs there's plenty other people that are like could be enemies or who was the other person you were actually thinking of sebastian yeah okay cool yeah so like what are we doing here like it's to me i think production hammed it up even though i'm sure everyone was upset but like everyone's playing this game this way and which brings me to like our my first talking point for today which michaela says and i want to read it because i want it to be um she says this michaela says at the beginning of the episode so we're going to bring us to the beginning of the episode here i think chris is playing for chris that's what she, mm-hmm. michaela says i wrote and i said out, i literally out loud said to the tv michaela who the f are you playing for are you playing for someone else now besides yourself? Like, what are we doing here? What is this like deep hatred for Chris? Maybe you don't like the way that he's trying to play for himself, his strategy, but every one of y'all are playing for yourselves. You don't want someone else to win that 250K. You want to win that 250K. So in the long run, you can pretend that you're friends with all these people, but you're playing for yourself ultimately. That's the way I look at it. I, you might feel differently and please, you know, expand on that. But like, Michaela, what are we talking about here? Well, no, I know what you're saying. It's true. You you have to play for yourself. Like everyone has to, wants to win the money. It is an individual, especially now. Now there's like, you're not even attached to any team in terms of right. really competitions. Um, so you do have to play for yourself. That is everybody's interest. But I actually appreciated Michaela's commentary. Like I was kind of taking her as, um, I was trusting her as the voice because she's in the house, right? And we're not in the house. Um, and she's survivor and Chris is survivor. So where there's smoke, there's fire. So it's not just Michaela, like everyone on survivor was feeling that way about Chris. Um, so y- you have to think if enough people are feeling that way, then obviously there's gotta be validity to it. And if Michaela's saying that, then she's likely felt this vibe from him from day one as her survivor partner you know as somebody who's in that baked in show alliance she's felt probably from him since early in the house that he's not as aligned with survivor as she and the other survivor people i'm glad you brought that up okay okay because (laughs) you're right chris admits like yeah i want to work with the vets if the vets want to work with me i want to work with bananas wes whoever else he mentioned i think he said Corey. i don't remember but he does want to work with the other vets and not just survivor um an episode or two ago, did not we see uh, Bananas talking with Michaela? And Michaela's like, yeah. well, if Bananas wants to work with me, I'll work with Mr. Banana. Well, that's kind of what Chris is doing. You're doing it too. And yet Chris is the bad guy. I, it just it just rubbed me the wrong way. This whole, like, I want to like Michaela, especially when she was working with Wes on the green team back in the day. I want to, but she keeps rubbing me the wrong way. She wants to go after Wes. She's like, ah, screw Wes now. Yeah. I don't care. What, I, I just, I, it, it's bothering No, me. I agree. I know what you're saying because you do have to have numbers outside of your show. That's just kind of like a smart way to play the game. But at what point does that catch up to you? And I feel like it just caught up Chris early enough, maybe because he did something to expose himself. For example, it's not the smartest thing to throw out names that are in your show like he's saying to Michaela Michelle. let's throw in Michelle yeah. or no he's saying to Michaela let's throw in Cassidy then he's saying to Cassidy let's throw in Michelle so now he's going around 
naming multiple people from his own show and people haven't really had to do that yet like big brother hasn't really had to turn on each other yet they're actually fighting tooth and nail to stay together to stay a unit the challenge vets are trying so hard to stay a unit so chris was that first domino that fell to expose like well fuck it i'm fine throwing in a survivor girl sure as long as it's not me so that is sketchy you know if you're someone from that show even if eventually you're gonna have to do that too when it gets to that point if he's already like fuck it let's just throw in someone on my show then you're kind of going to be like oh well yeah i I think it's it's the difference between burning a bridge to burning multiple bridges and i think chris is just like let's set fire to a bunch of things because it does he is running his mouth like there's no denying that i'm not trying to deny that chris didn't do anything wrong or wrong whatever you want however you want to perceive what wrong is in this challenge house it's like it's a free-for-all you're trying to win two hundred fifty thousand dollars. if you can win and you're doing some sketchy stuff on the side you still won you're still getting the money you might have done it wrongly but what's wrong in reality tv i mean as if you don't (laughs) if you don't get kicked off the show for boozing or fighting or whatever it is or being racist then I don't see how that's not anything wrong. You know, I don't know. Well, I, yeah, I think in terms of playing the game, he, uh, somebody said it, maybe uh, the line, I think that somebody said was he put his trust in the wrong people. And I do think that's what happened. He ran his mouth to way too many people. And I think that he trusted Michaela in a way where maybe he thought, oh, well, I can tell Michaela who on our team, I would be interested in cutting first. Right. And like, no, I don't play like that. So yeah, I don't, I, oh yeah. God. And like knowing what I've known now about Michaela, I wouldn't say two words to her in the house. I don't, because even if I was just trying to be friendly, I think she might try to twist that. Like with Wes, Wes was like, why don't you like me? Like he was just asking. And then she made that into this whole thing about Wes being a snake and him being this crazy guy. Like, I, I would not be talking to Michaela on this show. I get she's, she's the mm-hmm. problem with that is she's a fierce competitor. She's really good. And if you can get her as an ally, she's probably not going to lose very often. Like you want to keep her happy. You want to keep her around because she is a strong female uh, competitor. So it's hard but to say. I do actually, but tonight actually showed me why you would want to be on her side as long as you are correctly on the same team. Like, because she was loyal to her alliance. She was looking out to her survivor girls. Like, that's what Chris did wrong is that he tried to say survivor. He mentioned the other survivor her, girls. Yeah. And she was like, no, no, no. So we don't really know the buildup of what Chris and Michaela's relationship is. And that's kind of right. what we, and- we see. What we see in the beginning is that Michaela did try to confront him with her doubts and her suspicions her and um she finds out that he kind of is rocking with the vets anyway like he he named so many challenge vets that he said that he's working with and aligned to uh so I mean that from her vantage point she's like okay like noted that you have all these other people in your corner see if I'm Chris I'm playing this completely different way I'm saying yeah I'm aligned with the vets just to keep them happy but I'm really team survivor I think Chris's big mistake is mentioning any why did he have to or think he needed to mention yeah I get there's all the survive at the beginning of the episode Cassidy says there's seven survivors left and not a single one of us is gone. Like she says that that's not verbatim, but that's quote unquote. So, or not quote unquote. So like. <laughs> not yeah. open quote, end quote. <laughs> right. Not open quote, end quote. Uh, not that. So yeah, I don't know. So obviously it's like, okay, maybe this is going to be a survivor episode where people need to get a survivor and need to get, needs to get eliminated. But at the same time, Chris, why do why even bring it up with Michaela? Just say that you love all the survivor people. We're going to run it to the end. I'm going to work with the vets, but yeah, they're going to, I'm going to, and then tell the vets the same thing. Oh, I'm going to work with you at the end. I'm going to start getting the survivor people out. Why not do it that way instead of literally just kind of like blowing his load like he's like yeah i'll just tell you everything why not like that's not a good move dude Well, that's where i'm interested in again kind of like what that buildup was so yeah i don't know because yeah maybe they're really close and he thought he could confide in her like we don't know that though because they don't quite give us enough information on their backstory it's an edited show so we don't know the timeline of events like when michaela (laughs) and chris are having that snack having a meal in the confessional and that's the way that it's recorded this conversation you know like when are they being told to go into the confessional that's besides the point um we don't know was that after michaela and chris have that opening conversation at the lunch table because if so then maybe that was Chris feeling like, oh, Michaela wants more from me. She told me earlier. She told me yesterday. She doesn't feel like I'm on the survivor team. She feels like I'm sketchy. So now let me tell her where I'm at so that at least she feels like she has an insight into my game. But but Michaela's whole point was, it doesn't feel like you are rocking with Survivor. Right. And then in that confessional, he turns around 
and names her survivor girl. And then to Cassidy names a different survivor girl. So it's like everybody's suspicions are becoming true. You're showing everybody that you don't really care about your survivor show. So they're not going to trust you. Yeah. We have the timelines are always going to be off. And we just found out this season because Wes it was talking about it on his Patreon or wherever he died. I think he's talking on page because I have another Wes thing about his, his Patreon for sure coming up. But like, he his jumping in the pool something as simple as that was from literally like the first night supposedly they used it in episode, like episode five episode <laughs> yeah so like who knows yeah. what else they're they're just fudging stuff but we know this like we're not ignorant to that uh all right let's move on from the chris stuff because we're gonna get i'm sure more <laughs> of his stuff's gonna come up do you have anything else in the vignettes from the beginning besides that i made a um, quick little comment here but i'll let you go first about something we see Sebastian and Tori cuddling yes. in bed. And I love that. And this is not to the fault of this guy because we rag on him a lot, but they they use a bite from Fessy's confessional. I know that it's the producers are interviewing him. So they're asking the questions, seeking a certain answer. They probably yes. asked everybody, but they decided to use the bite from Fessy. And I'm just laughing because Fessy's like, it never ends well. Like, I just know this isn't going to end well between them. And I'm like, oh, because you, they use the guy that hooked up with five girls on one season yep. to be like the voice of reason on relationships in the oh, house. So I, I wrote this, like, I wrote that down, but I also wrote down, does it, to me, it seems like Sebastian is more into Tori than, like, though, it was obviously, like, the problem why? with this freaking show now. Oh, hi. who? Someone's here. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. The, the problem with this show now is that scene of them lying in bed, they've got a camera in their face. It's not like the camera was up in the corner of the room filming them. They very well knew they were, like, 100% on camera. <laughs> And it just seems like Sebastian was doing a little acting for the camera, but like, and then Tori mm-hmm. didn't want to join in on that. Like, I know the camera's getting all this. I really like, I'm just like, not going to go all the way acting with you and pretend that I'm so into you. Like, this is just another showman. For, whatever happened to Emanuel and Tori, whatever happened to that other guy she was with or liked at one point, like it, it's just another guy. There's a, a rust showman. It's nothing for her. I'm like, usually I'm like, oh, I really think Tyler and Alyssa like each other. I hope it works out. I'm not buying this for one second that Tori gives two Fs about Sebastian. It's just some dude that kind of <laughs> looks like Emanuel and she's going to go with it because it's he's kind of edgy. Like, let's be real. If you put Emanuel next to Sebastian, they kind of have that same, I don't know, I, I, I slick my hair back and I have earrings and I have tattoos. Like that's, I just look at him like that, honestly. Honestly, Sebastian's boring to me. I think he's a really boring guy. I'm happy he's off the show. Yeah, I do. Well, I mean, I think that there's a lot of people, like we said, we don't really learn about people until they're going to be in, eliminated, basically. Yeah. Um, so tonight was his episode. And what did we really, what did we learn about Sebastian tonight, even though, like, did we well, get anything good? Like, what was, what, that he's some prepared stuff. To, He's prepared to a lie on someone, too, to, to shake up the game a little bit, to get some of his political strategy out there. Because I was like, wait, Sebastian, but we didn't get to that point. Um, I'll say this, though. I love that Corey went and confronted him. Like, that was great. Too. I was yeah. love, I'm like, finally, Corey, you're gonna do something this season? Is it just waiting? Like Corey, he but just floats. I mean. He loves well, to yeah. float. I mean, to your your point again, because you said you thought he was boring, but that's kind of on the same point. It's like we're not really seeing a lot from a lot of the people. Like yeah. Corey, yeah, for that. Do we ever see a lot from Corey unless he has a random hookup, which he can't really do anymore because he has like a like I a nice think lady. He used, yeah. He used to be pretty prominent in the episodes, but right. I, I totally agree with you. Um, the biggest <laughs> takeaway I had from you talking about Tori and Sebastian is how awkward it would be to have a camera on you when you're yeah. hooking up with somebody in bed or cuddling or laying with somebody in bed. Maybe they're used to it. Maybe they don't care because it's what they signed up for. I'm sure some of some people actually just always want the camera on them and like it. I don't know sure. about those. I'm not saying it about them, but I've always thought that on every reality TV show, when you just know the camera guy's like right up yeah, in there. Versus like, if it's in the corner of the room and there's a little camera there and there's not an actual human attached to it, like in person, I feel like, yeah, I could lie in a bed with a girl and be, and just be cute and talk to her. But like having the person like kneel down next to the bed with a giant camera, you know, it's not like a small one. It's one of those ones on the shoulder and they're just recording yeah. you. Oh, just God, it just seems so weird. Like, oh. I've been on reality sets before. I, I, I know how it works. I've watched it out, come out and like, I've watched them film oh, the scenes. It. It's so fake. It's not real at all. It's so obnoxious, <laughs> but 
it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a fun, cute little thing that they're doing whether in the house because they're both single and can have fun and do whatever they want and have a flirty relationship with somebody. So it's just like a, yeah, it's not that scene, a- But that scene felt more awkward to me than the one later where they, this was the episode where they stayed home from the club, right? Or was that last episode? Did they oh, stay home God. from the club? This I just watched this too. How? Why are you testing my memory? No, I think it was last episode. Up. They stayed you know, home from the club in one episode. Yeah, that stayed, one seemed more yeah. because they were in the confessional cam and they were just kind of yeah. having fun. That seemed better because there's no human right there. You're just in a room alone with a camera. So yeah. it feels more intimate. That's all I'm saying. All right. That's true. Let's move on to the uh, speed jumps uh, challenge. Two yes. stages here, Jenna. Two stages. Yes. They, you got the equalizer today on that trampoline. They had the different heights for the different depending. And you had to jump, you had to look up and you had to add up numbers. I'm telling you right now, Jenna, I would have killed this episode. I don't know how they got the number wrong. I thought I would have just destroyed those numbers. And I would have been using my fingers and just keep it in my head. Fingers, head. I would just kept going. I would have, I would have nailed it. Well, good for you. Good Thanks. For you. <laughs> what about you, Jenna? <laughs> um, I know it's just addition. But I'm not a math girly. Okay. I'm, not. I'm not really so, good at math either, but like basic addition, just that seems simple to me. Addition. It totally is basic addition, but it's basic addition. Well, first off, let me say, I was just laughing at this challenge because how funny it almost is like. One person in particular, but I'll like let embarrassing. you go first. It's almost yeah. like putting a dunce cap on, oh. you know, to, to have to watch these grown ass adults jump up and down on a baby mini trampoline, just I know. Back, and forth, back and forth, they're just jumping around. I was like, that's actually hysterical. They're making them do that. I thought it was really funny to watch them all be in that position. Um, but I could see, well, first off, there's the mental aspect, right? Like nerves, cl- cloud your judgment, the heat, whatever. All of that stuff I think is true as well. Um, I'm probably just making up all these excuses because I know I probably wouldn't do well in this because of math. Well, we don't, we'll never, we'll never know. I'm trying to find any little bullet point I can to defend the people who weren't doing well, but it was the majority, you know, but it was less didn't even, didn't even make it. Yeah. Not even, I don't even, they didn't even show them bring an answer forward. So I was like, okay, uh, did you guys get one? It had to be trickier because it is mental math. And once you start hitting those, like, double digits and you're like rising in double digits you, all you have to do is be wrong by one digit and you can't and yeah. then you have to start all you know? over really yeah you can't go you from the beginning all that's, over. that's you true have to double check your math if you're jumping like second by second getting catching one number being like okay now i you also might forget what place you were at like oh okay i'm at 24 then you jump and you're like you see the number seven you're like shit wait what was i at 20 was i at 27 like it just muddles your mind you know yeah maybe i i don't know i think i, I was kind of like doing it with them like they kept showing the numbers and they kept it was all i think it was pre-recorded they just had the camera do this just to show <laughs> like the action of the people and i was like okay um, and i and i practiced the adding i saw a six and a seven i said that's 13 two more I was like, okay, 15. I just kept doing it like with them. And I was working my way left to right, like a book up and down, like a snake or whatever you want to do it. Yeah. And I was like, I think I would be okay at this, but whatever. Um, I think it would take me a very long time. Like I could get there. Trust me. I could right. get there, but not in record speed. I would not be the first one, but that's also what I loved about this too, is because all of them look like happy go lucky, like little toddlers or like golden retrievers running up like like all of them are yeah. so excited to show off what they have on their answer board, like thinking it's going to be right. Like yeah. all of them are wide eyed. Like it was so funny. I felt like they all had the same facial expression on that thing. They were so excited to see if they got it right or not. And right. DJ, I love when they had that succession of just like one after another. No, 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 you're all. And then there's just like seven of them standing there. And he's like, no, you're all wrong. Not one of you got it right. So the funniest person to me was because he's, I think he's such an idiot is Fessy. Did you see him trying so hard to cheat when when no, TJ when TJ would say someone was wrong, he'd still look at their board to see like what did you get though? Like well, he wanted to see like how I don't know, just all the numbers that were wrong in case he got that number later. Like I guess it's in some way like maybe a little bit kind of smart because he didn't want to repeat that number. But like no one, like I think Sebastian was the first person to get it right, and I don't know if that's up. There. I like, could see him trying to look at his board, and I was like. Fessy, how did you not just see his number? Like, I thought, I swore I saw Fessy look at his number. Uh, well, Sebastian's everybody, that is. Everybody might have a different board. No, no, they were all 91. It all ended up being 91 for everybody. I know. 
I know. Because when t- when when Chanel got it right, she covered it like she pressed it against her chest. She, she didn't it. want anyone else to see it. So, so even the placement of the numbers on the board were the same. Like everything about the board. I don't. Was- I I would assume why not. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, someone yeah. in the comment section, I'm sure, can tell us all about it. I thought Fessy was really funny too, but for a different reason because uh his his hair blew back every time he was running to teach i i just like i just thought it was all like so embarrassing you know i I encourage yes that's right i encourage all of you to go back watch fessy he's absolutely like the amount of times he's literally trying to look at everyone's boards it was it had me cracking up because he was trying so hard to cheat well, but this is after they said they were wrong. Like the boards are wrong, yeah, bro. Yeah. And you're still trying to look at their boards. Like it was so funny to me. And it was funny too, because a few episodes ago, he said that he was really good at math. Um, yeah. And I'm not saying this shows you're bad at math. I'm not saying that because this is a wackadoodle weird situation. It doesn't like totally prove if you're good at or bad at yeah. math. But oh yeah, for sure. If you were going to like hype yourself up and die on that hill of what your strengths are and you say you're good at math and then you just like keep running up right. with like a random number that's wrong every time but he, but he qualified that's he my didn't... next conspiracy is i don't know who got it first fessy or josh because sebastian was number oh. one they told each other like let's be real like dude it's 91 yeah. and then he came up like so that like that felt very conspiracy to me like did they really both get it like they both made it to the next one i don't think so i, I think Probably. that they cheated there as far as the girls it's chanel michelle and tori those are the three that make it so you have your final six going into round two anything else on round one i was very surprised no bananas or west one because but like they're the vets that have they literally like are the only ones who just live for this in a sense you know when um we always say you don't like wake up and know how to walk a, across a balance beam that's like suspended 60 feet over a building but like west and bananas do because they've been doing this for so long like and that's another have- reason i think that i think that josh and josh or fessy cheated with each other like they just told each other so it didn't even give west and bananas an opportunity like they were like well they just they just gave each other the number how am i even supposed to but at the same time i had to rewind it after I said, did Wes and Bananas even compete in this? And I went back to make sure that they did. Okay, they were there. How come that they didn't get, I didn't even see them run up. Like what's going on here? So I don't know. Simply that they didn't do well. Maybe they did not do well. 100%. My conspiracy could be completely bull, but I'm sorry when Fessy and Josh, best buds, make it to that second round. Why wouldn't they tell each other? There was no rule. Hey, it's 91. You can't whisper it and have someone not hear. Like, come on. They could get away with it. Yeah, know. mouth it to them. But I just know this is my oh well, it's Monday and this episode was out on Thursday anyway. So somebody tell me this. I don't know if this happened yet, but it, for people that listen to Wes's Patreon, I just right. have the biggest feeling Wes is going to say he lost this on purpose. I just know he's going to ah! say, oh, of course what? I knew it was ninety one. I knew it in a second because I'm brilliant and I own businesses and I have cars and mansions and. Uh, <laughs> equity and all this shit but i lost on purpose because i didn't want the target on my back i, I didn't do- want to be the first one to have to go after a survivor player you know something yeah, like yeah. that i um, guarantee i have another that. thing so west does like a uh he he does like announcements on his instagram for what his patreon is going to cover the, uh, the week ahead and one of them was and we're going to get into this later but if you notice banana got one vote he did, yeah. And, and Wes was going to tell us who voted for bananas on his <laughs> Patreon. Okay. So if you know, because uh, I not not that I don't love Wes, but I'm not going to pay for his Patreon. So if you know who voted for bananas, let us know in the comments below, because I I do not know. Um, let's get to round uh two here, and the first thing I want to talk about is how unsafe I feel that this thing is. Uh, you're bouncing up and down on a trampoline, and also they had little metal cables attached to each hip of the person but my thought jenna was i really think that you could still like awkwardly half i know it's tugging on you each side those little cables it just seemed dangerous like backwards forwards Uh, left or right like you could like accidentally fall out i mean we saw what happened to tori um so i don't know it does it did seem dangerous everybody was flopping everywhere it seemed yeah. like any wrong movement and you could have just propelled off the side of the bus. And like, you, you know, you probably wouldn't have gotten severely hurt because it's a TV show and they have the safety. It just the, the way that they were harnessed up there seemed very awkward to me. So I, I, I didn't like it at all. 
I, I was like, I would not feel good about this at all. I'd be sketched out. And I think that that's playing in the minds of some people as they're competing. Um, I think a little bit less so for the guys. Well, Sebastian was the first to go. So he doesn't really, you're going in blind. You can't really have that much fear built up until you're watching other people. For the girls, I think seeing Tori go first and having her wreck her back on like the second one, she mm -hmm. got right back up and, and killed it. But still like that hurt. Um, yeah. I think I got it on Michelle's head. And Michelle was just kind of like, eh. yeah, uh, I saw what that. happened to Tori. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so I think that definitely played an element. That was sketchy. You, you might not perform as good as you typically could because of you have that factor of yours. I mean, Fessy figured out the, the trick to it, if you want to call it that. So the idea of jumping up and down and then you have to jump forward and backwards to grab the flag that you have to aim it twice. You're aiming by jumping because you have to aim that. And you have to also aim how you're going to lunge forward or how high you're going to go, whatever. By, by just standing there, Fessy eliminated half of that. And he only had to aim one time, which was jumping straight into the air and plucking whatever color he wanted. So do he figured think, out the trick. Do you think, though, that jump is a trick or was that significant because he's like six foot eight. I, so you nailed it. Oh, that was my next thing I wrote down. It helps that he's very tall. I'm not yeah. sure anybody else was going to be able to do that. He's six foot five and has probably pretty long limbs. I'm six feet, but my arms are pretty long. So maybe I could have tried that if I saw him go first and tried that same technique once or twice. If it didn't work, then I can start actually jumping on the trampoline. But and don't I think you practice. He was like a uh a collegiate football player don't you practice like vertical jumping and stuff yeah and to like, get that thing and then hit that muscle. to see how high yeah. you can your vertical jump is from a standstill oh damn tall like yeah so yeah maybe that is smart i'm not discrediting him but to have that one jump trick but i also think his height really was probably yep. the difference maker there although josh is tall too but fessy is yeah oh my god i got the best it, it, this is another thing you all got to go back and watch about josh Okay. So when they see the semi, this, the semi truck come around the corner and everyone's like, yeah, yes. You see Josh like piss his pants. Cause he realized he has to do it. But then he's like, yeah, he pretends like he's super Aww. like, uh, I'm like, I felt bad almost, but like he, I, he was petrified to go up there. I don't care what anybody says. They show everybody like, this is going to be sick. And you see him like, yeah, it is like, but I knew he wasn't hyped about this and you saw it when he was up there the guy did horrible but like he was so scared it was great damn yeah i missed that good catch perceptive uh Sorry, Josh, you're usually, afraid. it's great you know i don't usually love when they bring the trucks in i'm not really a truck challenge girl like when i see that no, they i don't care it doesn't do shit for me either when they walk up and there's asphalt and like a raceway i'm like oh god they're using the trucks again yep. it, you know but the last truck one was good when they had to go side to side in between the two trucks and um try to pin right the pin the color circles on top of the other that one was okay yeah. again i'm not a you know what i would prefer jenna Hey, um, okay, there's 20 of you, 10 of you here, 10 of you here. Make a human pyramid. Whoever can make it first and grab this flag wins. I love that kind of crap. They have to work as a yeah. team. There's going to be drama. Someone's going to fall and get hurt, possibly. Not really hurt, <laughs> but, you know, onto the, the soft thing they, they created for them to fall on a mat. And there's going to be f funniness. Like, that's what I want in a challenge. I don't need the semi-truck jumping in the air and getting a flag. Doesn't do it for me at all. Yeah, because I think what happens a lot of times with the truck one is that the, the trucks become the main part of the challenge. And then that the it, challenge is mediocre at best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it doesn't actually produce like an interesting, right. and athletically challenging challenge. Um, although this one was really challenging, but yeah, usually the, the fact that it's a big semi truck going a certain miles per hour, just like takes away. It's such an attention grab. It takes away from their actually yeah. being at like value in it. But I mean, this wasn't one of the worst ones. I just, in general, don't really go for the truck ones. They're yeah. not my favorite. Go stand on that island with a foam bat. You each get a foam bat. You'll have these helmets <laughs> on and try to hit each other off the island. I'll watch it all day. That's fun. It's good stuff. Do you, do, remember, do you remember Rivals when they had to ride like little tiny bikes with their partner? Oh, it was <laughs> yes. and the and religious and the religious girl uh god the religious girl from the recent season of in the real world when they brought them back Je jessica was she no no the, the blonde kind of crazy 
Pam always made fun made fun of her because she always talked with her eyes. She was like real New Orleans or something like that. Okay, and I don't on that same one, instead of doing the long way, she tried to go straight across. Oh, uh, shortcut. Okay. And she fell right <laughs> off in two seconds. They all made fun of her. But yeah, just like little dumb shit like that. And that's very humbling. Up. Like as athletic and great as like, well, CT, you know, all these heavy hitters are at things, putting them on like a tiny little bike with a partner. Julie, Julie, crazy remember, Julie, like, the blonde. Oh, I remember, no. but I don't. I also, I feel like because I don't remember her, I you wonder remember if her if I show you. Different. Oh God, it's like blurry and shit. I wonder if we're thinking of different challenges. I'm thinking of they were on a little bike and they had to pedal a little bike. Yeah, and they have to go through like an obstacle course. Yes, but there was two yeah. ways. You could do the long way around or you could do okay. straight across, which was okay. a time saver, but the beam was much thinner. It's the same one. Okay. And, Ju and Julian, like maybe one other person were the only ones to attempt it, and they both and everyone else like, no, we'll take uh -huh. the long wide one but anyways whatever uh -huh. uh, okay. okay let's move on um, here uh tori and fessy win congratulations to the both of them do you have any thoughts on anybody else's performance on the uh no not really again i i i don't check out when i watch that but i'm like okay you're jumping for a freaking flag the higher ones are worth more i've seen this a million times i don't i'll wait yeah you kind of did okay i thought josh did crappy michelle did crappy I mean, everyone did bad except for Tori and Fessy. Am I right? Was yeah. it? Sebastian did okay. He did good. He, did and he really had to go good. first and he had to go yeah. first. So props to him for going first, I guess. But again, yeah. I just, you have to, aim, I, I said my bit about you have to aim twice. If you're doing the, it's like a double jump. And they also have to jump this way. You're, you're double aiming. It's kind of difficult, I would think. Well, I do think it was extra tricky too. And I, it's, you know, you don't want to blame like equipment or, or things like mm -hmm. that. Like if somebody loses, you want to say you lost fair and square or you won yeah. fair and square. But I do think the trickiness of this one is not pulling down the entire rope. Like how hard must that be? You know, like, yeah, it was always going to come from the her. side and pull, pluck it out. Yeah. And of course, when you do something athletic, you never want to think that it's like, oh, I just didn't do it right. Like someone throws it to you, you drop it, you're like, bad pass. So yeah. I felt like just kind of like that, you're you're going up for the flag and you pull the entire rope down. You're like, no, I just put the flag. Why'd the whole damn thing come down? Yeah. Like I could see myself being annoyed. Yeah, I'd be annoyed for sure. That seemed, yeah. You, it, I just wonder how strongly those those ropes were on there were how, yeah. how how hard could you because look at they were pulling the flags pretty hard but then every once in a while when they pull the flag hard maybe they grabbed a little too much rope aren't they also yeah. were they wearing gloves as well or not yeah. i don't know because gloves can kind of get in the way of your of a, how you're gripping or if you're barehanded you know almost get like a little more intricate and you can kind of snap in there and get that little piece of flag i don't know whatever yeah because i think chanel shot herself in the foot by of course she was playing to win so you have to go for the higher flags, but because she was so fixated on that, I feel like she couldn't even get a flag because she was trying to jump maybe higher than she was capable of. And therefore she just kept missing the flags because she was aiming too yeah. high. But because I would have liked to have seen her do better because, you know, we're getting just glimpses of people that we don't really always see yeah. a lot. But Michelle was funny because <laughs> she was just like, okay, yeah. well, that was fun. That was fun. I'm I glad lost. I made it to the second round. <laughs> and also, it's like, okay, so you feel like you're that safe with the survivor, so you're not even worried about no, it. No, I okay. think she just took the L because she knew, like, just like she said, well, no, I've never done this before. So, yeah, it wasn't my best go, you know? <laughs> Don't I mean, really have the idea of the challenge is to kind of work in the right. moment to figure out this brand new thing yeah. that you've never had to do. So, that takes some skill as well, just knowing that instead of being the Michelle type, I don't, you know, oh, well, I mean, you know, yeah. okay. No, keep working. <laughs> Maybe you can actually get better at this in the next 30 seconds before it's over, but. True, yeah. true. Uh, okay. Um, we can get to nominations. I know that Fessy really wanted Bananas and West, but he knew that wasn't going to work because Tori was going to not want them in. Uh, Chris had a video call right before nominations. That's where they placed it in the timeline. I said, that can't be good, or can it? Right. Like, it's one of those things. That you get, right. like, it, we've seen it a million times this season with uh, Desi. She had, like, her moment. Like, it's either going to be really good or really bad what's happening right now with her and a, a couple other people as well. So I was like, okay, well. Chris either way, you know who's going in, at we the know least. Chris was going in. Like, I knew right away. Yeah. Did you know? that I knew it was Chris. I didn't know who he was going to have to go against. But, like, Chris is going in, right? Like, yeah. Very early on, I was like, it's going to, Chris has something to do with this. 
Uh, nominations, they they agree to Cassidy and Chris. Do we have any thoughts on nominations with Tori and Fessy? Uh, I understand where Tori is coming from because it's tough because that's your roommate you got to sleep next to. But yeah. at the same time, I'm sure that they're close, right? And they probably do talk about the game because they're roommates. But from what we've seen, neither of them have made any promises or alliances to, en- to each other. So the way I look it at is- it is the numbers you know? are dwindling. Fessy is, is right when he's like, yo, like you, Tori. And Tori's been to blame on other seasons for this too, where she tries to save every single person. It's like, Tori, you're, yeah. you're, you got another person you have to work with now. You might not be on the same page as them, but if they get to, if they're agreeing that you can put in someone, you've got to give them something back. So um, and she's yeah. also made, you know, she's made some agreements with Michaela, Desi, and Chanel. So she can't go back on that. That would look bad for her. Sure. So, I yeah, thought it was so- uh, interesting that Bananas felt so safe and secure. It ended up being the fact that he he was. To, I mean, he did get a ball. But um, for him to really feel like so safe with Fessy, you know, we, we have his confessional where he's like, you know, Tori and Fessy, where all of us are pushing the same way. We're all on the same team here. I'm like, wow, you seem really, don't you know better? <laughs> like, yeah, you, well, you know, you, again, that brings me to who voted for him. I want to know who is I like know, not on the see. same page. Like I just, cause like it literally, we saw it with Alyssa Lopez and, and of course, TJ always brings it up. It only takes one vote in order to try to get us to believe it. Like it's such, the chances are literally so slim when you think about it. Like literally, um, in the it, tonight, there was 11, uh, 13 votes in there. One of them was bananas. That's literally not like, is it a 5% chance? Like, what is it that bananas actually gets put in there? Like, not, not much. Let, let's be real. Yeah. You know, not to ask me. I told you I can't even add. That's so, true. And my 5% is probably I'm definitely off the not drafting up percentages over here. Uh, yes. But... I think tw- I think if there was 20 people, it would be a 5% chance. So he probably had like an 8% chance of getting put in. For yeah. That one both. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do you have, I mean, we kind of talked about it before, but then this is where the entire episode, like I feel like this whole act of the show is devoted to just everybody hating Chris. Yes. Oh my God. This this whole <laughs> next part is all about Chris. Part. That's where I wrote the line. Everybody hates Chris too. I mean, Yeah. It it was a little bit tough for me to follow, I'll be honest, editing wise, just because I am trying to think, uh, you know, I'm not, it it was hard to take it like at face value uh, as a viewer, because I'm thinking like, we're not in the house and we're just seeing like everybody hating him, him making promises to multiple people. But like I said, where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's enough people who are all in agreement that he is ruining his own game on his own accord. Like this is no one's fault, but his own. So I just, I, I guess I would have loved to have like been in the house to actually experience like what he was doing. I mean, Pete, and, and every contestant is looking for a reason. And if you see like even two or three people start to pile on Chris, why aren't you going to join that? Because, okay, it gets him. Then it's not, if you're a girl, you're like, okay, yeah, let's let it be a guy elimination. Let's pile on Chris. And if you're a guy, you're like, yeah, let's all have Chris votes. Or, or uh, well, Chris got put into nominate. Well, then that's true. It, this was after. You're totally right. Chris was trying to save himself throughout the everybody yeah, he was hates trying Chris to save moment. himself. Right. And it's so there's two parts of that too. And this is always like the the blurry line of being on the challenge too, because of course you want to evade elimination. Nobody wants to go in, right? But it's also a competition game show and you know eliminations are part of the game when you sign up you know it's something that you have to go through to win um or or you know if you can avoid it then that is talent and that is political strategy and all of that but it's very rare especially if you're coming from another show and you're a rookie to to not go into elimination so it's a tricky balance of like of course you want to fight for yourself to not go in but how far are you willing to go to make all these enemies and almost make yourself look a little bit desperate just to avoid it? Like at the end of the day, it also is the challenge and everybody goes into elimination. So right. well, sometimes you, you what just got to go in. You heard what Wes said earlier in the season. He's like, no, the elimination is like the best part of the show. Like I'm not scared to be here. I love being in this position. He was only sad because it could have been his last time, supposedly, if he's going, if he's going to never do the show again. But yeah, if you're Chris, like, Have you not seen past challenges where people go in there and they start dominating the eliminations and then they're asked to come back again and again to do the show over and over and over again? I mean, 
I sent you the cast list for the challenge uh, 39 that's debuting in October. I sent you girls, I DM'd you on Instagram. I don't know if you saw it yet, but yeah. you don't have to look if you don't want to. But some of the people that are shown there are have definitely seen their time in eliminations and were became cast favorites because of it. And that's why they're asked to come back on this show. Now, yeah. I, I'll say, I'll, and I also, I don't know if it's a teaser for 39, but I looked at the cast list and I know there's going to be some vets that come back that they're just not showing on this main cast page, but I was really not like overwhelmingly excited to see the majority. Oh, okay. Well, I'll I wasn't it out. like, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. In fact, there's a couple where I'm like, why is this person back? Like they, okay. their time was done. Can I give you one name? You must, mu uh, must you. <laughs> I, got, I can't even think of her name right now. What was, who was the girl that was paired with CT? She really said her name like big, big Z. No, big T. Was it big T? Oh, we yeah. love big the, the cook. She, she, she went to cooking school. She's going to be like a famous chef. Well, apparently she didn't get a job as a chef because she's back on the challenge, but that's besides the point. Not excited to see Big T again. Yeah. I'm just okay. not excited to see her. I don't yeah. care. She was, she sucks on the show. She's good. I <laughs> guarantee you she'll suck again, Jenna. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. Are you excited to see Big T in, in season 39? Yeah. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> I got to see who else is on the list, I guess. I liked Big T. Well, I'm excited to see. I can tell, tell you someone I'm really excited to see. Who is the guy? It's so funny because I'll remember it as I start talking about who is the guy that was paired with the girl that got nailed in the nose and they had to leave early. They got she got with the tennis ball or the golf oh, ball. Yes. She was just on it. His name Her Horatio. Horatio partner. See, uh huh. It's so funny how I think of the name as I describe what they did on the show. Olivia. Yes, Horatio and Olivia. I'm excited to see. I don't know if she's back, but Horatio's back and I'm excited to see him. Okay. Oh, go. okay. Yeah, I'd be excited to see her too. Right. Oh, me too. 100 percent Redemption. She needs a redemption season for sure. Nice. We'll see. Um, but back to the Chris point is that, of course, you don't want to go in and you're going to be nervous to go in. But my point is like, but the more kind of unhinged and almost desperate you become in the house, pitching all of these other people, it, it will kind of turn on you. So do you just I mean, he was already going in, though, right? He was already going in. Well, his name was, but he was pitching it. Oh, right, right, right. Trying to manipulate it to be all girls. Everybody vote for a girl. So that way West he did have the same thing, right? Didn't West try to do it? Yeah, too? yeah, exactly. Um, but I guess, yeah, no, he did do the same thing. Yeah. So, I so I, like that doesn't bother me. I don't, like, I don't mind. Like, whatever. Do what you got to do. Like, that stuff doesn't bother me. Like, and you girls yeah, have talked I mean, about Michaela. Remember when Michaela got canceled him, off the though. show or she got kicked off that she got voted off the show and lost an elimination and you, and because of the note thing, didn't she write down notes and they yeah. got her off the damn show? Like do what you got to do. Like, why should that be a reason that people, I mean, everyone's looking for a reason, I guess. I don't know anymore. Well, no, well, because he's exposing that he's willing Working with to, multiple groups. Well, yeah. And, yeah well the thing is who else is around Aly Alyssa S so I guess that the thing is he should have just been pinning and campaigning for Alyssa S and not throwing in his own survivor girls names yeah I mean it, it, it's hard again because we're not in the house and so Kathy is also the other name and she is a survivor which is the same show that Chris is on so she wasn't really going around saying, oh, let's make it a guy's day and let's go after Chris until she knew that he was saying her names. But but was she fighting for her for it to be a guy's day to save herself? I mean, we don't know because right. that would be fair too. So we're just seeing like the it one side. It was like a double, she's like, hey, this works doubly for me. I'm going to roll with it. But we talked about the numbers are getting smaller. So like if Chris is like, okay, there's seven of us left and none of us have been targeted. Should we start like getting rid of some of us? Like, because they're all going to, if we don't start losing numbers, then that's, we're just going to be the numbers. Like we might as well get rid of someone. Maybe we can yeah. push the business back to big brother or back to the vets. Cause I think in the next couple of weeks, we're just going to see survivor people start to have to turn on each other. And Chris made the first move. So yeah. Okay. So he's going to want to get the blame. Well, it is what it is. I don't fault Chris for that. In fact, in this elimination that we're going to about to talk about, I was ruined for Chris. 100% I was rooting for Chris. I'm like, he at least brings some type of drama to the game. I feel like Sebastian's just there to worship Tori. And I don't think she's that interested. So I'm not for that relationship. I don't think it's, it's not fun to watch. It's not a fun relationship to watch. At least Alyssa and Tyler, I'm like, I can buy into this one a little bit more. Yeah. So, whatever. Um, 
I wrote down just for fun. I wrote down the name of the club that they went to. Did you catch the name of the club? No. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's it's spelt E P V L O N, Eplon. Okay. Club Eplon. So I just wanted to let you all know I know the club they went to in case you all want to go <laughs> over to Croatia and check up Club Eplon. It's it's over there to the, to the Caribbean. Yes. <laughs> to the Caribbean. Yes. That, yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Um. Boom, boom, boom. Chris running his mouth. Corey confronts Sebastian. We talked about that. Oh, Secret yeah, vote. that was, um, we yeah. didn't, I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but that's what I was prefacing earlier when I said there was like another villain in the show too. Yeah. Uh, because again, people are reacting to other people's actions again in the timeline that we're seeing. So Sebastian's whole thing is like, okay, Chris is being shady and people aren't liking him. So I'm going to go lie on him. So, I mean, I guess that makes it a little bit better, but I also was a little bit like, whoa, Sebastian. Yeah, me too. I was like, you are really like over committing to this bit. I think a little bit, like you're really just making up a straight up lie. Yep. I don't, I don't, I was, I was a super, like, I was never really a big fan of Sebastian. I just like, he's there. He's got ties to Tori, big deal. He's not really doing much on the show. And now after this, I was like, yeah, I'm good. He can go home. Like, I don't need, he's not bring, even when he tried to stir up some drama at club Epvlon with, with Tori that night, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to go after Corey, this big hair and everything. It's like, well, how, okay, great. You want to go after Corey? How about throwing like, how about Wes and Bananas too? Like, why Corey? Why is it Corey? like what is Corey? He's not doing anything. He's just hanging out. Like go after someone else. And and his whole uh his whole plan was to get Corey out, right? Yeah, that's what he wanted. He just wanted to get Corey in there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I was kind of thinking like Corey's a vet. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I was like, he loses. Like he could he could yeah. definitely lose. He's. I'm really sorry, tough. but like I'm not really expecting Corey uh, to like win yeah. this thing. So I'm not not to be mean, but like I'm going but after bananas. Or Wes, like before I go after Corey, I just am. That is like the order of if I'm in the game and I'm and then Wes for some reason doesn't want to pair with me. I don't know why he wouldn't want to be my best friend on the show. I don't know why, but let's say he doesn't want to be my best friend. I'm going after Wes and Bananas because I'm sorry, I'm not worried about Corey. Plus, doesn't Corey have something with like, doesn't his knee always act up on him when he has to run long distances? I have a, a, ba- a weird back memory of him in like past challenges or past uh finals where his legs act up and he can't run long distances and maybe that's all taken care of now but i'm not worried about Corey. i'm worried about <laughs> wes and bananas i do only remember that from the first season he was on actually bloodlines when him and his cousin went sure to the yep that's i remember the that too only time, so that mm-hmm. his knee injury might be totally fine yeah uh but i'm not worried about him doing puzzles either are you worried about him doing puzzles yeah. on me like I no mean, Sebastian is thinking the same thing where he's like, oh, I have to try to do something to save myself. Uh, but him, Chris was already, wasn't he already voted at that point? No, no, this was in the, the oh, club. Uh, wait. Yeah, the club. They, they yeah. show the, they show the club after the, the that Chris and Cassie are nominated, but who the frick knows? Well, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Sebastian is trying to do his strategy after Chris is already the nominee that's absolutely going into elim- elimination right. so he doesn't he's want going to, to the vet saying chris oh my god chris is just running everywhere and he's naming different girls but then he also has another pitch where he's pitching you Corey, because he says you're beatable and he's gonna beat you uh and i'm just thinking but sebastian what's your long what's your long game goal with that because is that gonna save you from getting votes? I agree because, like, you're if already. I think it just makes you look like you have this offhand lie. I don't know. I agree, and you know why, Jenna? He's paired with Tori. Now, I know I'm. I don't think Tori's in love with this guy, but I don't think Tori. That's gonna be Tori's first vote to go after Sebastian. Like, he's gonna make it further in the game if he doesn't pick out the vets because the vets are gonna be like, "Well, that's Tori's guy. We can probably. He's not number one. We have other guys we can still go after." Plus, I know damn well, if I'm Sebastian, I look at myself in a mirror, and I'm not really like this jacked up strong dude. Like, I'm, he's not, I'm not saying the guy's a layup. I don't know anything about his history on Survivor. But I will say there's other dudes in that house that I'm more worried about. I don't know, uh, Fessy? Like, I'm not going to be going after Sebastian as I got, like, even like, Tyler's kind of on the scrawnier side. I'm still going after Tyler before I go after Sebastian. I'm just not worried about Sebastian. That's yeah, a- no, that's a good point is that 
maybe he probably didn't need to go down this early because there's bigger threats in the house, but everybody's playing with numbers though. Like everyone, it's still short game. And that's where I think where Chris went wrong was because he was confiding to certain people, uh, exposing like who on his own survivor team, he'd be comfortable cutting loose be when, when it comes time to turn on them, but everybody's still playing the short game with their show. Like, that's why Sebastian and Tyler got so many votes because the vets are, you know, they're not going to vote for themselves yet. Right. And I think uh, there's, there's only two big brother people left though. Right. Well, technically Josh and Fessy. Oh, I guess brothers. that's true. And I learned tonight that Fessy and uh, Tyler played together. Yeah. So I, I didn't, didn't know that either. That. Right. So maybe they have a stronger friendship than we were giving credit and we just weren't seeing it. Like maybe they have each other's backs a little bit more. Because yeah. They haven't shown they haven't that shown one together. bit until like literally this episode, but it did keep Tyler out of the main vote. So they went Chris instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I think that's, that's kind of what's happening here is that the vets, like we've seen, they don't really, they don't play dangerous until they need to, like they, they always pick an easy rookie. You know, they always yeah. sacrifice the easy person, even though that person's probably going to lose. Like they don't really care to take out strong people early. They want it. They play kind of like the easy, safe game. I when it comes you know to what? It, I don't see why they wouldn't do that because like, I know so like, that's oh, why Sebastian got that- voted down but that's why sebastian got voted down yeah but like, like, like are they really like oh the, uh, the the finals are coming i don't want to run against fessy in a final anything can happen in a final at this point like i get it yeah it would probably be a little bit better if you had sebastian there instead of fessy but i don't care it so much stuff happens like in mm-hmm. these finals that like anybody can win it west talked about it literally on our show yeah like you got to have some luck that comes in with it it just is what it is like just get to the damn final and see what happens yeah, and we're probably also saying that because we don't, we truly don't know anything about Sebastian. Like, who's to say he wouldn't win a final? I don't know. He was on Survivor. Like, we haven't really seen him make any splashes, winning daily challenges, like performing amazing until he did good on the daily. I mean, challenges. did he win Survivor? Do we even know that he might have? My point is though, if you, I don't know, if you, did. if you win Survivor, like you're probably pretty good at mm-hmm. at least like the idea of endurance or mental strength or whatever you want to call it to get through something like that. So yeah, I mean, sure, I'm sure he could do fine in a final. I don't, I don't know, whatever. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we're he's just gone. He's not even on the show. Up. We won't even see him in a final. <laughs> yes, it does. But um, segueing into, I was. <laughs> I guess I wasn't thinking about how those anonymous votes were going to shake out because we didn't hear just any other discussion outside of everybody hates Chris. Right. So when it was exposed where the votes landed, I still was actually surprised to see six for Sebastian, six for Tyler. That could have just been because I wasn't thinking about it uh, because we were just so like overexposed of everyone's Chris stories. Yeah. I was thinking like, how did those votes shake out then? Because you have six and six and one for banana. So, so it was actually, you're, you're very close. It was six and five for Tyler. Oh, six and five. And then okay. one for Alyssa S and then one for bananas. So I think there's a whole other storyline, Jenna, that we just don't see where obviously people are in the room saying, okay, Chris is obviously already in. Who do you want to go against Chris? Oh, well, I want Sebastian. Oh, I want Tyler. You know, there, there must have been those people like, well, let's just put them in. They're rookies and they've never seen an elimination. But Tyler had seen one, actually. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, I think, voted for him for that reason. He was just down there and like, why not just throw him in again? He already saw one where he had to do that thing against Monty, which was absolutely crazy. Let's not burn bridges. Let's just vote for Tyler again. I think you're going to see Tyler... Now, definitely get votes next week. Like, why wouldn't they three weeks in a row vote for Tyler again? The same people. He's the only one left. Sebastian's gone. Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to think about who voted for who coming from which alliance because we do only have two just big brother people. We Alyssa and Tyler are big brother only. And then Fessy and, and Challenge. So... I don't, they're not going to vote for Tyler, you know? So they were probably Sebastian. Um, And a a lot of the other vets, we know who voted for Alyssa. Chris voted for Alyssa because he obviously wants to try and make it a girl's day in any way that he can. And he said, you know, if Cassidy could beat anybody, beat somebody, the Alyssa is probably the most beatable. Elimination, Jenna, trick, trick, boom. 
Uh, all I wrote was, yeah. bye, Sebastian. See ya. They're playing, like, a trick game. It was okay. It was fine, I guess. Yeah, what? no. Listen, I'm going to be a huge Debbie Downer on this oh. elimination. Oh, I wow. thought it really? was okay. so whack for the challenge. So whack. Like, I listen, I was entertained. I mean, I was watching with some friends, and we definitely were like, oh, oh, when they were doing the side can shot, because that actually does take – you know, so yeah. it definitely does take smart angles and almost like a, a, a math mindset. Um, totally get that. Think it's a fun thing, but for a family game show for yeah. beer pong in the backyard, the Olympics, not for the challenge. It was, I thought it was just such a, a whack carnival game for a show like the challenge. And I was like, this is not. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried. We're going to see more of that because the CBS show now, and they like to make it like big brother vibes. I was rooting for Chris this whole time. Just, I wanted to throw that out there to the, the people at home. I just didn't care to see Sebastian anymore. I'm like, he's done. He had his time. Um, and, and I'm good on that. So, yeah. I didn't even think about who I was rooting for. Like the fact you, that you, you just mentioned it just now. And before, yeah. when we were standing over there and before my wife, I cut out, I was thinking, I don't even think I was rooting for anybody. I think I was just so annoyed that it was the elimination. First, I was so annoyed for the longest time. And then when they had to do the side can shot, I was kind of like, oh, like, I did yeah. get locked in. It grabbed me for a second and I had some fun with it. But for the most part, I was just like, this is so stupid. So Imagine going on a show like the, the challenge and that's how you lose, like in a cornhole game. I felt like it was like as if you lost in cornhole in the backyard. And you're like, oh, how'd you how'd you lose on the challenge? Oh yeah, I lost in this backyard ski ball yeah. situation. It just yeah. Yep, super disappointing. Not a great, not a great elimination at all. Rosie, yeah. you didn't like it either. Well, she was rolling around earlier. I caught that. Oh, did you? I didn't even see her. Oh, yeah, you're she... rolling around behind me. She yeah. likes to sleep. Yeah, she likes to sleep next to me while I, while I do show. Hi, baby. Yeah. Hi, baby. Um, so I really hope that they get it together. Because, you know, I know you guys hated last elimination for a similar reason. Because it just felt like Big Brother, not super um, athletic, not, you know, very yeah. action-packed, just frustrating to watch. And as much I did like the last elimination, but seeing these two back-to-back -back does make it seem like maybe these yeah i hope this doesn't continue well i did you hear what i said about like it's cbs now and i think you're going to see a little bit like more of these type yeah. of games because like a cbs vibe not. yeah i hope yeah. not um yeah. next on the challenge <laughs> next on the challenge did you watch that real quick i did josh cries we get some crying josh that's yeah. pamela is gonna love this when when we see her next week and then what i was thinking wes when wes was watching chris He's like, I really want Chris to win because this guy is on an island right now. And that's someone that I'd love to add to my team. Now, that is someone I'd love to see too. Wes and Chris together. That's mm -hmm. a very strong team, I feel like. But then on the next on the challenge, it looks like Chris does not want to return that favor of being teammates with Wes. So I'm like, well, there you go. Sorry, Chris. I'm a Wes guy. So I'm not going to be a fan of you. But like, that would have been really good if you wanted to. But well, that that's funny because I had a different take um, when okay. I heard Wes say that. I was like, Wes, you just think everyone is at your disposal. Like, you really just think you can pluck anyone up, put them on your team, make them do what you want. Like, what makes you so... But, I get but Chris's situation, if, if all Chris is hearing is how much everyone hates him, Jenna, yes. and then all of a sudden Wes, who's a very strong competitor, says, hey, man, I don't like what they're doing to you in the house. Work with me. Let's try to get to a final. I'm working with... Well, I'm going to... I'm just going to try it. Yeah. We'll have to see how the conversation goes. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think watching the show and the game is so much different than being in it. I and know. I, I just don't even know what, what I would do, you know, yeah. <laughs> like politically yeah. and strategically. Cause we get to, well, we, we don't get to see everybody's conversations, but we're in on who's every, everybody is working with. But if you're in the house, you aren't you don't always know everything that's going on and right you, right 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 yeah yeah 100%. how do you know how do you know to trust people so i wonder All what right. chris is gonna do though now because it, chris coming back is better for the show because yes he is like enemy number one and it's like is he gonna dig himself out of this or is he just gonna be the scapegoat every time like he needs to start right. winning some challenges um so it's interesting it's gonna be interesting to see like what what moves he makes to to try to better his game. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for next week. I thought this was a solid episode. I was uh, I was invested. I think that after what nine episodes now, I still think the show is is doing really. This is one of the best seasons I've seen in a while. It's never yeah. going to be like it used to be when it used to be an amazing yeah. show. Like we're never we're not going to get another Rivals two. We're just not going to get another Rivals two. It's sorry, but it's just <laughs> not going to happen. Um, but this is if this is what the challenge is turning into, then I'm okay with what it's it's good. It's better than it's been. Yeah, agreed. So. All right. Uh, final thoughts on you. You good? Anything else? I think that's it. Right, I think Rosie, I Rosie, final thoughts? Sense. So everyone in the comments who's probably going to be like, what? What did she, was she even talking about? <laughs> what, do you, what did you say? I said, I hope I made sense this whole time. Oh, yeah, you made I'm sense. Working oh, yeah. through it in my head, you know? Oh, yeah, I feel you. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, covering these three days or four days later gets tough. I have to, like, review my notes. Because in the moment when I was writing them, I was so passionate. I'm like, yeah. why was I so passionate writing that note? Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll see y'all next week for episode 10 of the Challenge USA season two. Bye.